I'm Pastor Willie Ricafrente. I'm from Cavite. Was changed by the Lord, just like the apostle, the apostle Paul was religious. I was so I was very religious at that time, but God changed my heart. So for, just like Paul, Paul was used to be Saul, right? The the Pharisee. God changed his name to Paul. I used to be Willie Boy Salbahe. Now I'm Papi Willie. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> you know, the ACCI family, I, I, I don't um, encourage them to call me Pastor Willie. And uh, everybody now knows me or calls me uh, Papi Willie because we believe that God did not um, send his son to organize a religion. Is that accurate? Right? He did not bring his son here to organize any religion. He came here to bridge us to him. So that by him we become children of God. By him we will have a brand new born again spirit. And here what you're doing right now, this is what we call family. Where this born again spirit shall be taken care of. Amen? Now let us feed our spirit now with the word of God. Are you ready? Yes. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, kalimutan mo na yung labahan. <laughs> right. <laughs> Niisip po siguro, uy, nakalimutan ko isang pay. Magagalitan naman yung aking ka-flatmate. <laughs> Last week, we had such a, a powerful day with the Lord. The presence of God is, was here. Amen? Tell, the, tell your seatmate, he is here also today. Amen. Because He is true to His words. When He said, when two or three are gathered in His name, He will be in the midst of them all. Amen. Kaya sabi mo sa katabi mo, wag mong burahin yung ite sa mukha mo. Because God is smiling at you right now. Amen. Amen. Halatang halata ko yung mga ano eh, oh. yung mga sanay yung sumimangot. Kita kayo. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, Last week, we spoke about the story of Moses, right? And the burning bush. Uh, it was, we, we discovered that, you know, God can present, can, can, can call our attention in many ways. Grabe, iba talaga si Lord tumawag. He's different, no? Imagine, he called on, upon Moses because God mo, prepared Moses, right? So that Moses can be used by God to free Israel. God knows. God knows. That's why he is preparing men and women. He is even preparing you for something great. Konti lang yun nag-amen. Amen. Yeah, I believe that. God is preparing you for something great. Akala mo gaganyan-ganyan ka lang. Every day gising, you know, gising, kain, pasok, uwi, ligo, tulog. No. God is preparing you for something great. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, burning bush. Pwede naman managinip eh, di ba? Panaginip na, just like when um, when uh, nananaginip si Joseph. Right? God spoke to Joseph through the dreams. Or tawagin lang, like Samuel. But why the burning bush? You know, one thing that uh, uh, one thing that God showed me here uh, in this phrase, in this story, you know, I don't know. Baka God is calling your attention. Have you noticed him? Hello? Right? Have, God, have you noticed him? God could be calling your attention. You know? Sometimes it's just a small voice. But if you will keep a deaf ear, harden your heart not to respond to his, to his calling, something like a burning bush will come. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, huwag mo hintayin yun. Don't wait for that. Right? <laughs> Don't wait for that. The story exposed before us the divine importance of being in the presence of God. As I have shared last week, the presence of God gave, have put order in my life. Right? The presence of God have put order in my life. I used to be a religious person, goes to church, 
goes to church, but after, after that, I will leave God in the church. I don't allow God to mess around with my life. Freedom is freedom, right? But as long as I, as, as, as I leave God out of my life, I messed up. But when I started to realize that I really need God, who need, needs God? Amen? Amen? Yeah. Yeah. We, we all need God. If you need God, then allow Him to put order in your life. When I started to commit to this, I opened my heart to His words. The Word of God is important. We are all babies, born again. May nakakita ka ba ng born again na tumatakbo na? Right? Babies, like that baby needs to be fed. Right? Uh, and uh, the, the spiritual feeding of our spirit, born again spirit, is the word of God. Tanong mo sa katabi mo, busog na ba yung spirit mo? Right? Today, we start with uh, our 21 day of fasting and prayers. Every day, we have a devotional um, scripture reading and then may mga questions doon. This is such a wonderful feeding. I hope everybody can join and everybody every day. Fasting could be Janus fast, vegetables, fruits, no? uh, water, juice, or, or uh, one meal a day. Pwede. Kasi may trabaho kayo. One meal a day. Right? Or 21 days na huwag kayong kumain. Huwag niyong gawin yun. <laughs> Don't do that. But if you are encouraged and if you really heard, heard, no? I've seen men and women who fasted 40 days. And they survived. And they became very powerful. Not because they want power, but they want more of God. Amen? Let's give the Lord a clap offering then. So open your heart with the, to His words. If you are a Christian, you haven't heard the word, you haven't read uh, uh, the Bible, wow, you're still groping in the dark. Because the Bible is a lamp unto our feet, a light for, my, for our path. And then I repented from my, my sins. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, repent, do not repeat. Okay? Repent, do not repeat. Pwede namang ulitan. Pero pag paulit-ulit, something is wrong. Right? And then I decided to live for Him. I offered my life entirely to Him. And I experienced and embraced the discipline and pruning from Him. He will change me. He has changed me. And then I have re-established my priorities. I'm sharing this because, with you because this is my life. This is my walk with God. And I hope everybody you know, can also commit to this. Amen? And put order in your life. See, God has a new... Uh, um, uh, I love God before, but I was so religious. But now I know. I know that God is not just uh, uh, a symbol of a religion. That Jesus is alive. Jesus is personal. Jesus knows me. He knows me. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, Jesus knows me. He knows us. Amen. Praise God. Now, because of that, because I have allowed God to put order in my life, the presence of God started to be a part of my life. And that's when I met Tita Sheila. Mami Sheila. You know? Blessings will come. And then I had three kids. You know? Now I have, I have so many spiritual kids. Kaya ganito na yung buhok ko. <laughs> Every Christian must work out their salvation by maintaining the presence of God in our lives. Amen? We will be talking about the presence of God for the whole month of January. Because I want you to embrace this. I want you to really realize this is not just a, a, a one-day preaching. This has to be planted deep in your hearts. It has to take deep root, grow and bear fruit in our life. That we desire, we desire in everything that we do for the presence of God. But friends, let me ask you this intimate question. Have you ever felt the following lately? Yan. Have you felt being spiritually dry? Palagi ka lang nasa church. 
church, bahay, church, bahay, wala naman nangyari sa buhay mo. Spiritually dry, parang nasawa, nasawa ka na. It has been, you know, paulit-ulit lang. Nothing's happening. Or, burned out. Are, are you spiritually burned out? You know the sad thing in the, in the ministry that I, that, uh, in, in the ministry that I am into right now? That there are those who are so passionate with God, so passionate. Oh, at Sipag, they work in ministry and everything, suddenly they disappear. They go home for a vacation. Pagbalik dito, napaka cold. Very cold. Because why? They have experienced, you know, owning their time. Because in ministry, you give your time to God. Right? So you start to burn out. Or do you have frequent attacks of fear, anxiety, and depression? Ayan. Binigyan na natin yan ng pangalan ngayon, mental health. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, okay ba mental mo? <laughs> Pangit pala pakinggan na, no? <laughs> Pangit pala pakinggan na, okay mental mo. But this is true, right? Frequent attacks of of fear, of anxiety and depression. This is real, by the way. Totoo po ito. You really feel that, right? Or do you feel like quitting in ministry? Do you feel like your life has no meaning and no purpose? Or do you feel like God is far from you that you no longer hear from Him? How about, are you easily irritated? Impatient? and unable to bear with others' mistake, lalo na sa asawa mo. That is it, heart. Okay lang yan. Oh, sorry, sweetheart. Okay lang yan, sweetheart. Pero ngayon, no ka ba naman? Simple lang yan, ah. <laughs> Easily irritated. <laughs> and no desire, and worst, have neglected Reading the Bible. You see, these are clear signs that you are losing the presence of God in your life. Hello? These are very clear signs. These are only some of it. But these are signs that you are losing the presence of God in your life. You see, God, God's omnipresence is constant. He is everywhere. His omnipresence. But, his presence in our life is not. Man? Today's message will show us the cause and how the cause of why God, the, the, why God, um, why we lose the presence of God in our life. He doesn't lose you, we lose Him. Amen? Today's message is entitled, The Presence of God, The Pain of Losing Him. The Pain of Losing Him. Our, our story will come from Exodus chapter 33. And um, our, we will, we're, we're going to focus on this verse, 15 to 16. Can we all read them together? Then Moses, if... on the face of the earth. You see, the story behind our series anchor verse, this verse, comes, came from Exodus 32. 33 na po kasi yan, right? In Exodus 32, where Moses, upon coming down from the mountain of God, bearing the tablet of God's commandments, was angered by what he saw. He was there a long time, but he was angered with what he saw. The very person whom he trusted, his brother Aaron, started to lead. He, he, he was coerced by the crowd. He was forced by the crowd to build an idol. He took all of the gold around and then put it on fire and then suddenly a shape like a, a calf came out. And then they worshipped this golden calf. God knew that it was happening. That's why He commanded Moses to go down. You see, Moses, Moses was enjoying his time with God. 
Moses was enjoying his presence with God. No, but God says, oh, hey, 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 go down and see. Because the people whom, he, whom I brought out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what God commanded regarding idol worship, which God abhors or hates. Remember, there's a command in the Bible. You shall not worship idols. Amen? You shall not worship idols. Now, in Genesis chapter 32, verse 8, God was mad when He said to Moses in verse 8, They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. Imagine that. They, this cast, this calf. He says, Israel, this is your God. This calf, this, the idol brought you out of Egypt. That means that idol was the one who parted the Red Sea. Now I understand why God says about idol worship that I am a jealous God. Can you imagine this? Imagine this, nagluto ka, ang sarap-sarap. Niluto ni Geraldine, no? Sarap-sarap luto ni Geraldine. No? Tapos nung kumakain, sabi, Thank you, Jen. <laughs> sarap mong magluto. <laughs> right? Well, that's why, you know, because the, the Israelites' minds are so corrupted. Imagine that. Ikaw ba naman? No. You know that it is God's power who parted the, the Red Sea. And now you're telling me that calf did it? Wow. Paano nga namang hindi magagalit si God? Right? Now God was so mad at Israel that He wanted to destroy Israel. But Moses interceded on behalf of the Israelites. Moses interceded on behalf of the Israelites. Let us speak from there. Let's speak up from there and continue this story in, in 33. Okay? Exodus 33 verse 1 to 17. Then the Lord said to Moses, Leave this place, and you, and you and the people you brought up out of Egypt, and go up to the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hevites, and Jebusites. Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go with you. Because you are stiff-necked people, and I might destroy you on the way. When the people heard these distressing words, they began to mourn, and no one put on any ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, tell the Israelites, you are a stiff-necked people. If I were to go with you even for a moment, I might destroy you. Now take off your ornaments, and I will decide what to do with you. Well, they decide the Lord. So the Israelites stripped off their ornaments at the Mount of Horeb. You see, one thing that we can see here, God's word is constant. So, mga God's word is constant. God's word is con it never changes. He holds on to the words that he releases. Now, he declared to Abraham that his descendants will be the people of his covenant, that Israel will be his covenant people. So, from Abraham came out Isaac, right? From Isaac came out Jacob, right? Jacob who struggled with the with the angels, who, now now whose name was turned, uh, whose name changed to Israel. And Jacob had twelve children. We called it, the, and they each one represented the twelve tribes of Israel. That's the story. That's the story. Now, now. Though the people of Israel were stiff-necked, it's been a stiff-necked, unyielding, rebellious, God, God still was willing to bring them to the promised land because He says so. Kahit matigas ang ulo nila, because He promised He will do it. He promised to Abraham that He will do it. But God's words declared that He will not come with them. You see, there are times when, when you pray for blessings and then blessings comes. And then when, when you're so you're enjoying the blessings that you for, forget about God. You know, you work hard, forget about ministry, 
you know, suddenly uh, the lists that I showed you earlier started to creep into your life. The presence of God is no longer there. You know, even in blessings, you know, God may bless you, but the sad thing is, if you forget about Him, He will not be with you. That's the reason why there's so many, so many people who are multimillionaires, they still commit suicide. Right? Because the presence of God was not with them. But there's, what, if there's anything that uh, uh, we can learn from this short story is this. God's word is constant. When he says so, he will do so. When he promises, he will do so. When he says, I will provide, he will provide. Amen. Now, let's fast forward to verse 12 and 14. Kasi mag exciting ito. Tandaan nyo, God will bless them, but God says, I will not be with you. Pwede pala yun, ano? Ibang klase. Now we know how God thinks, right? Right. Now, Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, Teach me your way. Say it with me, teach me. Teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. And the Lord replied, My presence will go with you. I, and I will give you rest. So many learnings here. God knows Moses, right? And, God, and Moses says, oh, if you are pleased with me, teach me your ways. Why? Because Moses wanted to, to, to continue to find favor with him if he knows how God thinks. Amen? The, but the thing is this. <laughs> the Lord replied. He says, my presence will go with Israel. No, only with him. Right? Sa kanya lang. And, and I will give you rest. Moses found favor with God and God promised him, my presence will be with you and I will give you rest, but not Israel. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. You know, sarap magbasa ng Biblia. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, naantok ka pa ba? Tulog ka kasi ng maaga pag mag-worship. <laughs> di ba? Sayang eh, di ba? Right. Ang sarap magbasa ng Biblia. This is how you read the Bible. This is how you expose, tawag niya expository. This is how you expose the heart of God, the mind of God, the plan of God. This is how you expose. Yung huwag lang basa ng basa. Amen. Di ba? <laughs> no, you know, know God. Just like Moses. Help me to know you. Right? You see? Sabi, and the Lord said, I will do the very thing you ask because I am pleased with you. There's some of the things that we can learn from this. Number one, number one, sabi mo sa katabi mo, choose a godly person to pray with you. You know, choose a mentor to lead you by our own selves. I, I am under a mentor. I'm under Pastor Jerry. When I was still starting, I presented myself to a godly couple. They're Malu at si Brother June. I always have somebody to mentor me. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, sinong tormentor mo? Eh, tormentor. <laughs> Choose a mentor. Amen. There's so many pastors here, leaders here. When you're here, be all here. Right? Not just attend a church. No. You are in with family. Sabi mo, sa katabi mo, kahit mas maganda ako sa'yo, pamilya kita. <laughs> we are family. You know? Be part of it. Right? You know why? Because blessings will flow. You know, like if you, like the blessing that I have right now, the blessing that I have right now, God is willing to pour it out to you. 
Amen. We had a calling, Mommy and Sheila, Mommy Sheila and I. When we received this calling, we obeyed no matter how difficult it was to decide. Imagine from the Philippines, we, 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 we're going to bring up our family in a Muslim nation. Hindi namin alam ko anong gagawin. Hindi namin alam ko anong galawan dito. No, wala kaming alam. But God says, you will leave your country and your father's household and eat and live in a land, in a foreign land. And you will be a blessing to many nations. Now, it has been rebuilt. UAE, many nations. Tama? Many nations. And you will be a blessing to many nations. Those who bless you will be blessed. Those who curse you will be cursed. And if you bless, you know, if you bless, you know, all of these blessings now, I have, I have, I have entrusted to and, and shared to my pastors. No, we have so many pastors. Praise the Lord. Palapakan natin si Lord. Men and women who have agreed no, to embrace the calling to be a pastor. And so we have so many leaders also. Praise the Lord with, with our lead. Palapakan natin mga leaders natin. If you're, if you're new with ACCI, I tell you, present yourself to a life group. They will be your mentors. You will know somebody whom you will trust to pray for you, to pray with you, to help you out. Amen? Sabi ng Panginoon dito, I will do everything that you have asked because I am pleased with you. Then look for the mentor who is, you know, God is well pleased with the mentor. Amen? Baka naman, yung mentor na kukunin mo pagdating ng Sunday, paalan na lang tayo kay pastor. Bitch muna tayo, oh, sarap ng, ha, ng araw. Oh. Diba? Now, Oh, a good mentor loves God above all. A good mentor, his priority is God above all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, Moses interceded and asked God not only for his presence in his life, but also his presence with the Israelites as they journeyed towards the promised land. And God answered his prayer. God obliged to the prayer of Mo Moses. Thus, the presence of God to Israel have distinguished them from, from all other people on the face of earth. When the time of David came, when the time of Joshua came, they defeated kings. They defeated kings. No, they, 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 they were uh, kings and nations all around them. They feared Israel. Iba ito mga taong ito. They feared Israel. They became different from other nations. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, ikaw different ka na ba? How will people distinguish you if you are still living as the world lives? If you feel like you are being persecuted, if you're being, you know, like pushed away from your friends, pushed away from your friends, the reason why is that you start to be different. Amen? The way you talk, the way you look at them, the way you respond to, to issues in your life. Ba, iba ito. Di ba? Dati, brother, sa mama katingin, no? no? Dati kasi ganyan po ako pag nagkikipag-inuman ako. Stable sa kabila. Titingin sa akin. Brad, may gusto ka? Ganun po ako nun. Hanap away eh. You know? Pero ngayon, no? Bigla na lang. Huwag na tayo dyan. Magulo dyan eh. Uy! Naduwag ka na? Dati kang ano ah. Ngayon duwag ka na. Naghiiba ka. Right? You know, the Bible describes us as foreigners. Aliens from this world. Ang sabi nga ni Apostol Pablo, do no longer be conformed by the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You are different. People will shun you. Sabi ni Jesus Christ, they will hate you because they hated me first. Dati, nagtitiktok ka. Yung tiktok mo, yung mga tipong Ngayon, ang TikTok mo, iba na. Di ba? Word of God, kung ano yung devotion mo, tinitiktok mo na. Di ba? 
Right? Dati popular na popular ka. Bakit ka mo? Apo, ang galing mo kasing mag-ayos ng mukha mo sa ano, sa computer. Gandang-ganda sila. <laughs> ang ganda ng mga kinis-kinis ng mukha, no? Pero pag nakita nila, pag nakita kanila sa natural. <laughs> Wag sabi, ang sinasabi ng Bible, what the Bible tells is tells us is this, don't flow with the world. Don't flow with the world. Flow with the word. Amen. Flow with the word. Now, the presence of God to Israel have distinguished them from all other people on the face of earth. Do you do you now see? Listen, this this people called Israel, named Israel. Do you now see now today? Why this small nation called Israel with a population of 9.174 million. Yun lang ang population ng Israel. 2023, ah. 9.1.9 million 174 people. But this regional and economic and 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 uh, and military powerhouse, Israel is a regional economic and military powerhouse. Sobrang lakas nila. The development of, alam niyo yung Microsoft Windows. Development of Microsoft Windows, your Intel computer chips, your instant messaging, cellular phones, and many medical devices all have significant research roots in Israel. They were the ones, the Middle East now is growing vegetables. The Middle East now is green, right? Why? Because of the technology coming from Israel. They were different. Iba sila. This tiny nation Hated by many huge nations. Small nation. Hated by many nations. Hindi lang sa Middle East, pati sa ibang, sa ibang bansa. They want to, to annihilate the Israelites. This, this small nation, up to this very day, stands strong. This is because of one reason. And what is that? The promise of God. The presence of God was with them. The promise of covenant. The promised covenant of God. God is with Israel. Amen. You know what's happening right now? Sobra po kasi. Um, you see, if you read the Bible, you will know the reason why things are happening. Let me just share with you, this with you. Uh, this is the second time that a nation was, was uh, being uh, uh, to be to be uh, annihilated, yung mapatay lahat ng buong-buong Israel. Even now, they shout that, right? Huh? They, they even shout that, right? From the river to the to the sea, though. So, they, they want to to kill all the Israelites. You know where this came from? Remember, Hitler, millions, was killed, right? Wanted to annihilate the, the, the Israelites. Even now, wanted to. Alam nyo nang galing yan? Because of the disobedience of one person. I was reading the Bible and then there was a command by God to King Saul. King Saul, God says, destroy all the Amalekites. Destroy. Men, women, Children, pregnant women, old people, even even their cattle, destroy all of them, destroy all of them. But King Saul, out of pride, when Samuel uh, heard about this, these animals, so who, what are these animals? And then Saul, King Saul says, "I preserved them so that I can present them to God." as a sacrifice. And then, he also did not kill King Agag. He did not kill King Agag the Amalekite. No, did not. And the family of King Agag. But Samuel killed King Agag. But the family still remained. See what's happened now. What happened now? I was thinking, Lord, so bro namang lupit mo. Why, 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 why like that? Too much, too much. 
<laughs> Why like that, Lord? Too much problem, huh? <laughs> And then, fast forward to the book of Esther. You see, in Esther was a Jewess, right? And then the, he found favor with the king. No? Maganda yung romance nila, story na yan, right? But there was this guy named Haman. Say it with me, Haman. Uh, H. Haman. No? Haman. And he hated the Jews. And he was, all, all, he, he, he was all, uh, have, uh, almost uh, uh, annihilated or killed all the Jews during that time. Pirmado na, pipirmahan na lang ni King. Kill all of the Jews. But, but God prepared Esther at such a time as that to protect Israel. And you know what I found out? Haman was an Agagite. Oh, descendant ni King Agag. God knows that these Amalekites will pose trouble to Israelites, to the Israel. They will pose trouble to Israel. Kaya alam ni God eh. So kailangan tanggalin na yan para walang problema. And then, later on, sino yung susunod na, na to wanted to annihilate? Si Hitler. Sabi mo Hitler. O, anong letter uli yan? Tapos ngayon, ano? Hamas. Anong letter? Tapos, meron pa Huti. Anong letter? Oh, walang kailangan naman yung H doon. <laughs> Gusto ko lang gising kayo. Walang kailangan naman yung H doon. <laughs> But this is, there are times when God would like to, would like somebody or someone or something that you do away from your life because God knows that that, per, that thing, that person will harm you. Oh, Right? Right? Because God loves you. God wants to protect you, right? And there are times, you know, He calls your attention. Hindi para sa iyo yan. O hindi sa iyo yan. Di ba? Soli muna. Di ba? Ano man yan, kayo nang bahala. <laughs> Grabe si God. Sobrang mahalaga sa Kanya, ang Kanyang mga salita. Say it with me, salita. His words, He also on so much of His promises that this, is, that this is the reason why whenever Moses reminded him of His promises, God always obliged. But Israel was a rebellious people that God decided to give them a last chance of redemption. He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Last na to. Last na to. He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. The visible image of the invisible God, the Prince of Heaven, became human like us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Go back to Genesis. Let's let us create man in the image, in our image and likeness. Us being plural. Who was God talking to? It's not the angels. Angels are not like God. Who was he talking to? Jesus. Amen. Jesus who was in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And He was with God. And He was God. And the Word became flesh. And He dwelt among us. And who is this Word? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Last effort na to. Last na to. For God so loved the world that He gave. His only begotten Son. And whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. But still, Israel was hard-hearted. They still hang on to religion, refusing to believe in Jesus, the promised Messiah of the Torah, or the very scripture that they are reading, and they are even until now, They are reading. They're still waiting for that Messiah when in fact, He already came. The evidence is so overwhelming. Why is it that they are so hard-hearted? Hard-hearted, stiff-necked. Sobrang tigas ng ulo. Until now, they hang on to their religion. 
Sabi mo sa katabi mo, baka ikaw religious ka pa din, ha? I'm not against any religion. Not against any religion. But what I have in my heart is that, you know, religion was created by man. He created God in the way they wanted it. That's what religion is. That's why religions now are divided. Oh, better ako. Oh, tama ako. Kayo mali. You know? Hindi yan ang gusto ng Panginoon. In fact, in John 17, Jesus Christ prayed. I pray, Father, that they, those who believe in me will be completely united. Okay. The good news is that the promised Messiah is already given to us, Jesus Christ. Palapakan natin ang ating Panginoon. Israel was supposed, supposed, that the supposed to be used by God, no? To evangelize the world. Kaya nga lang, sobrang tigas ng ulo ng Israel. From Israel, now God looked at the non-Jews na i-transfer. Na i-transfer sa Gentiles yung authority, yung, um, yung plano ng Panginoon na i-plano sa Gentiles. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, tayo yon. We are the Gentiles. We are non-Jews. That's why God, instead of continue to bless Israel, man, to bless Israel, Israel is blessed but God is not there. I, I was in Israel, I went to Israel and it, you know, it's so, it pains me a lot. It so pains me, why? And dami, there's so many atheists there, so many agnostics. No, so many LGBTQs. I love them, you know. I love you know, people. Love everyone. You no, know, God loves everyone, right? But you know, may kita mo don mga Israelita. We went to uh, to a beach. A beach. Kita namin ko kada dito. mga naka ano? Naka swimsuit. mga lalaki na lang katawan. Punta sa tropa niya. Hi. Oh my, this is so good. <laughs> you know, I, lo I love them. I have, we have, we have, uh, we have LGBTQs here. But these LGBTQs have decided to put their life in order. And now, God is using them. <laughs> The, and, and the sad thing is this, many Jews now are indifferent to Christian Jews. They're, they're indifferent to Christian Jews. And many have become atheists. And I hope they can feel what King David felt. You know, the presence of God was no longer with them. The presence of God was no longer with them. Ang hira po. And, and what's, do, do you know how it feels not to have the presence of God in your life? You see, napakaganda pong magbasa talaga ng salmo. We need to read the psalm. L listen to this. He says, this is, this is David after Nathan the prophet confronted him about his sin against Bathsheba. Remember that story? Bathsheba and then Uriah and then um, Solomon. And then Nathan told him, hey, anong ginawa mo? Ganyan. And then he finally realized and accepted the sin. And then he says, Create in me a pure heart, O Lord, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Do not cast me from your presence. Why? He was feeling the absence of God now. Amen. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Why? Yeah, I'd like to, uh, to confess or share with you uh, a, recent, uh, a recent event in my life. About two, three days ago, I was with Be Pastor Bea. You know, my, my, my daughter, Pastor Bea. And we were having lunch. 
We're having lunch. And then suddenly somebody called me up and then, yeah. Uh, and then he, w he was like um, encouraging people to invest. You know, to invest. And I told them, because they always called me up. They always called me up. Alam nila siguro millionaire ako kay Lord. Kay Lord, kay Lord. They always called me up. And then I told them, you know, brother, I'm already 65 years old. And we have invested, you know, so many. Uh, we already have investments, and we just let it, let it, let it there. Uh, and we don't need any uh, any more investments. Oh no! But you know, like you know, there are so many. Even this billionaire also make investments. Blah, blah, blah. Brother, brother, I'm already 65 years old. Mm -hmm. I just want to enjoy the fruit of my labor. I don't want. To, I have, I have headache. Oh really? Uh, but you know, you're from the Philippines. Uh, you're from, yes, yes, from the Philippines. Ah, oh, you're telling a lie. How will you be millionaire? Huh? <laughs> ikaw masabihan nun? <laughs> so, ikaw sabihan nun? Nag-flare up ako, grabe. So, do you know who you're talking to? Wow, di ba? Di ba? <laughs> do you know? No, 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 no. I know you're, you're lying. Pinilit pa. Do you know who you're talking to? You don't even know me. Sabi ko ganyan. Sabi no, why don't you represent your country well? And then, uh, nagsumisigaw na ako. Sabi ni Bea, kikita mo, parang hindi, para hindi, ko, hindi ko inintindi si Bea. Talagang nag-grant pa rin ako sa kanya. No? Hanggang finally, hmm. Sabi si Bea, it's like, you are not that. And then finally, I felt something heavy in my heart. Why did I respond like that? Not good. Right? Bakit? Ako nag-respond ng ganun. Imagine mo, people, are, yung, yung, ano, yung mga waiter was looking at me kasi I was shouting at the top of my voice. Imagine mo, I was, my emotion, sobra, na hindi ko na napansin yung iba. Ganyan po. That is the reason why. Sometimes God is speaking to you, but your emotions gets the best out of you, from you, right? Never thought, why did I do that? Why did I do that? The, suddenly, you know, the, that feeling that the press is, Lord, 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 sorry, Lord, sorry. Sorry, Lord, sorry, Lord God, sorry. And finally, it dawned on me. You know what happened? Remember? Uh, uh, the... Uh, Last of the flesh, last of the eyes, pride of life. Doon ako tinamaan, pride of life. Sabihin ba naman, Pilipino ka, hindi ka pwede maging milyonaryo? Ha! Magkano ka? <laughs> How much you? Come on, tell me, tell me. How many dirham? <laughs> but that feeling was so bad. I really ask God for forgiveness. Imagine this. My daughter was there. What kind of, you know, of uh, what model is my daughter looking at? Right? And then people around me. No, they, would, they, they, they will know that I am not, they will think that I am not a Christian. I do not represent God well. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, represent Jesus well. Represent Jesus well. And then it dawned on me. It dawned on me. You know, God will work together for the good of those who love Him. Amen? Amen? So I asked God for forgiveness. I was forgiven. And then God says, this is what you're going to teach. The presence of God. How, how painful it is to lose the presence of God in your life. <laughs> and then yesterday, yesterday, I was driving. I was going right, and then this guy, this guy was wanted to overtake. Pagano, no? And then, uh, ako na, na, na dito na ako. Binusan na ako nung binusan. Pip, 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 pip. Binuksa ko na naman yung bintana. <laughs> Tapos, 
Sabi ko, Lord, 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 ano ba naman to? <laughs> Talagang tinultukan pa ni Lord eh. Not good. <laughs> Not good. Kasi ang sakit po kapag wala yung presensya ng Panginoon sa atin. Amen. So, feel the heart of David. Do not cast me from your presence. Renew a steadfast spirit. Patatagin mo pa ako uli. Do not ka, ayoko na Lord, patatagin mo ako uli. Sorry, sorry, sorry Lord. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me Lord. And restore to me the joy of my salvation. Grant me a willing spirit to sustain me Lord. That is such a powerful prayer. Pag nagkasala ka, and you feel that the presence, remember the, the list that I showed you? Pray this prayer. Pray this prayer. You see, as Christians, the presence of God in our lives will distinguish us from other people. The presence of God in our daily lives leads us to stand strong and bear fruit on all the seasons of our lives. What happens in the world cannot dictate the blessing prepared to be, to be poured out by God to those whose God's presence remains. Anong ibig sabihin yan? No matter what you see in the world, amen, mataas, no? Uh, uh, sabi nila, limang piso daw ang bigas, magkano na ngayon? You know, bab bab tataas pa yan. No? Petrol, taas pa yan. Wars, rumors of wars, you know. So many people's love, love, the love of many will turn cold, violence everywhere. But if you are a child of God, the blessing that God has prepared for you will not be dictated by what's happening in the world. Amen? Amen? <laughs> Iba yung blessing mo. Dahil anak ka ng Diyos. And if you continue to sustain the presence of God, you can, you can experience Im immeasurably more than you can even think of or imagine. God's blessing is different from the blessing from the world. The consistent presence of God in our lives will bring souls at the fruit of the cross of Jesus Christ. Kapag consistent ka. The devil will not dare come near us when the presence of God is with us. Ulitin ko po yan. The devil will not dare come near us when the presence of God is with us. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, takot si Satan sa'yo. Huwag kang matakot kay Satan. Mambubuyo lang yan. He is just like a roaring lion. A roaring lion moving around you waiting to devour. Pero alam mo, kuting lang yan. Hindi lion. Amen. Because we are worshiping the creator of heaven and earth. We are worshiping a powerful God. We are a child of the living God. <laughs> the absence of God in our life will render us powerless against the plan of the enemy to kill, steal, and destroy. He will make us powerless. And the pain of losing Him, the pain of losing God's presence will, will, will always render us paralyzed against the plan of the enemy. Paralyzed. And dyan na, hindi, alam mo yung, 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 papunta na sa yung, yung, ano, yung, you know, a car is heading, heading towards you, and you know that it's not going to break, hit the brake, and what do you do? Patay kung bata ka. Right? You know, that's, that's how, that's what the, pre, the, the, the pain of, 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 of the absence of God in our life. Napaparalyze tayo against the work of the enemy. We are anesthetized in hearing the voice of God. Palagi kang tutudlain yan. Last of the flesh, last of the eyes, proud of life. Tuloy, 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 tuloy yan. yan. Hindi mo alam kung anong gagawin mo. Because the presence of God is not in you. You are inflicted with emotional and mental and spiritual torment and dryness. Kaya papasok dyan yung anxiety and depression. You will have an, a numbness, numb effect to the effect of sin in our lives. Just like David. He was numb. Never realized that he committed adultery, committed uh, murder. He lied. Never knew he is a king who loves God. But he forget, forgot about this because the presence of God was not with him. 
once, once you sin, God will turn His back from you and cry. You know why He will cry? Not because you disobeyed. He will cry because He knows that you will be hurting yourself. Desire to always be in the presence of God. Do you know how to be to, min, to remain in the presence of God? Do you know how to do you know how? Do you want to know? Oh next week na lang. Ngayon na, ngayon na. De, okay lang. Mga mga 45 minutes na lang ko pa pa. Biglang wala oh. <laughs> 45 minutes oh. This is how to keep the presence of God in our lives. Ready ka na? Honor Him with our life. And His presence will always be with us. And how is that? Aralin nyo to. All of the ACCI family members have already memorized this. Sana hindi lang memorize. Huh? Highest priority belongs to God alone. In all of your decisions, inquire of God. Proverbs 3, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and never rely on what you think is right. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him. Read your word. Read the Bible. Ask Him and He shall direct, direct your path. Obedience, even if it hurts. Because in obeying, obedience is the proof of our love for God. Kahit masakit yan. Kahit sinabi ng Panginoon, sinasabi sa iyo, tanggalin mo na yan sa buhay mo. Bakit, Lord? Ito na lang. Binigay ko na lahat. Ito na lang, Lord. Ito na lang. Ito na lang, Lord. Alam mo yung mga taong ganun, pinatatanggal ni Lord, ayaw bitawan. Para kang chonggo. Hello? Bote. Lagay mo ng put-put a banana there. Bigay mo sa sa mat, sa monkey lalagay niya yung kamay niya doon. No? Hawak-hawak niya. Hindi niya maalis yung kanyang kamay. Bakit? Ayaw bitawan. Hello? Ayaw bitawan. All he needs to do to be, to be released, to have freedom, is to release. And you will have freedom. Amen? So yung mga sa katabi mo, may pinarirelease ba si Lord sa'yo? You know, God wants, God wants, it, it, could, it could be pain, it could be unforgiveness, it could be anything, unforgiveness towards others, unforgiveness towards yourself. You know, God wants to give you freedom. Say it with me, freedom. He, God wants to, to bless you with joy. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. You know, nawala kay David. If you want freedom, joy, release. If God says so, do so. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Amen? And no to sin, no to Satan. No to sin, no to Satan. Sabihin nyo nga, Pastor. Pastor. Pwede pa ba akong magkasala? Oh, English natin para kina brother. Pastor. Oh, English, eh, di ba? Anong pa yung English ng pastor? Pastor. <laughs> pastor. Can I still sin? Uh, no. You know why? Because you're asking. You know, you, you're asking. Umahingi ka ng pahintulo to sin. No. Sin no longer is a part of our life. No? Sin is no longer a part of life. But do we still sin? Yes. But I hope it is unknowingly na. Okay? Now, God is looking for men and women. It's, it's not sinless perfection that He is looking for. Because He knows that we will sin. Even in our thoughts, right? Even the Apostle Paul says, He has a thorn in the flesh. But He's holding on for the grace of God. Amen? Yeah. So, but if you sin, confess, repent. Confess, repent, confess, repent until finally there will come a time you will find out, Lord, wala na akong confess, Amen? Because ayaw mo nang magkasala. 
you no longer want to sin. No to sin is no to Satan. Every time you, you sin, you hold hands with Satan. Wow. Close kayo. No. <laughs> no to sin, no to Satan. A letter O, open to be a witness in words and in deeds. Open to be a witness. Be a good example as a child of God. Represent Jesus well. Say it with your seat, to your seatmate. Rep let us represent Jesus well. Represent Jesus well. Amen. And finally, reverent fear for God. Not fear for God. Not fear for God because you, want, you don't want Him to, ah, baka ikaw ay, you know, God will punish me. God will punish me. No. God will not, does not punish. His punishment is hell. Amen? But He will discipline you. Right? Reverend fear for God. Oh, you, you fear God. Why? You fear God because He might not bless me. He might not answer my prayer. Come on, my friends. Fear God because you love Him. You don't want to offend Him. Amen? You want his smile always. He want, you want Him to smile at you every day. Psalm 91 says here, Because He loves me. Can we all read this together? Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. Who needs to be rescued? Because he loves me, I will put order in his life, in your life. I will protect him, and for he acknowledges my name. And he will call on me, and I will answer him. His answer could be yes, no, or wait. And I will be with him in trouble. Wow. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is what the presence of God will give to you. Can we all stand?